Hey guys, welcome to this lecture video on the types of radiation. In physics, radiation is the emission of energy through an electromagnetic waves or a particle which may impart energy to its target. Radiation is natural and is present everywhere from the outer space, the air, and the earth itself. Even our human bodies have natural radioactive elements. It has a lot of applications in medicine, industry, and research. In this lecture, I will introduce the different types of radiation. Let's start. Let us start with this illustration. Radiation is classified into two. We have the non-ionizing radiation and the ionizing radiation. Obviously, it depends on its ability to ionize matter. The minimum energy uh, needed to ionize an atom is called the ionization potential is in the range of a few electron volts for alkali elements up to 24.6 electron volts for helium. For non-ionizing, the portion where the wavelength is much larger than the body, so somewhere here, heating via induced currents seldom occurs. This involves the lower part of your radio frequency and those of static fields, also the power line. The portion where the wavelength is smaller than the body, so this is somewhere here, and heating via induced currents can occur. It involves the uh, microwave, the high frequency part of your radio frequency. Next, uh, we have the optical radiation portion where electron excitation can occur. It includes the visible light, the infrared, and a small portion of your ultraviolet, uh, the near ultraviolet. Last, we have the ionizing radiation. It has enough energy to damage the DNA bonds. It includes the X-ray and the gamma rays. As we have stated in the previous uh, discussion, Radiation is classified into two. We have non-ionizing radiation and ionizing radiation. Non-ionizing radiation do not have enough energy to ionize matter. It refers to all electromagnetic radiation that do not have enough uh, energy per quantum to ionize atoms or molecules. It includes the following. We have the radio frequency, microwave, infrared, visible light, and part of the UV, uh, specifically the near UV. Next, ionizing radiation, on the other hand, has the ability to ionize uh, matter because its energy is equal or greater than the ionization potential of atoms or molecules. It can be either directly or indirectly ionizing radiation. In medical physics, uh, we use mostly ionizing radiation in medicine but we also utilize non-ionizing radiation such as the RF present in the MRI. Uh, let us now focus on ionizing radiation. First, uh, directly ionizing radiation. This group includes charged particles that are capable of depositing energy in a direct one-step process, mainly through columbic interactions between the directly ionizing radiation and orbital electrons. The keyword here is this one, one-step process for directly ionizing radiation. Some examples of charged particles are light charge uh, particles that includes electron and positron, intermediate uh, particles such as negative pions, and heavy particles that includes protons, uh, alpha particle, and carbon-12. Next, uh, the second, we have the indirectly ionizing radiation. This includes neutral particles, photons, and neutrons that imparts energy in the absorber in two-step process. Uh, the first step, uh, charged particles will be released as photons or neutrons transfer its energy. Photons may release electrons or electron-positron pairs while neutrons may release protons or other heavier ions. The second step in the two-step process involves the release 
of charged particles uh, that deposits its energy through direct columbic interactions with orbital electrons. First, uh, directly ionizing radiation such as alpha and beta decay can impart energy through columbic interaction with the orbital shell electron shown here. So this atom is now ionized. Indirectly uh, ionizing radiation, on the other hand, such as photons and neutrons, is electrically uh, neutral and do not directly impart energy. Majority of the ionization are due to secondary ionizations, such as the release electrons. Gamma rays and neutrons release charged particles in matter, which are examples of directly ionizing radiation. Before we proceed, let us define first linear energy transfer. Linear energy transfer, or LEP, is the amount of energy that an ionizing particle transfers to the material as it traverses per unit distance. In radiation physics, this is also called the restricted linear electronic stopping power. This quantity is useful in radiation biology and radiation protection to describe the quality of ionizing radiation according to the density of ionization. DE delta, shown in the equation, is the local mean energy absorbed by the media due to the electronic uh, interactions or collisions lower than a specified cutoff value, delta, over the traverse distance, dl. This depends on the nature of radiation and on the material traverse. This picture on the left is a diffusion cloud chamber with tracks of ionizing radiation, specifically alpha particles, where we can see the track of ionization. It shows a dense ionization. Okay, so after defining LET, uh, according to the LET or the density of ionization, we have these categories of ionizing radiation. First, uh, the low LET, which means sparsely ionizing radiation, and high LET, which means densely ionizing radiation. It has a unit of kilo electron volt per micrometer. The focus of LET is on the energy absorption of the medium and not on the energy loss by a charged particle as described by the stopping power discussed in radiation physics. It has a unit of this one as I've stated earlier. So these are the examples of low LET radiation and we have these values uh, of LET produced in tissue. So we have x-rays of 250 kVp Gamma rays due to cobalt 60, so it has, uh, it is released by this isotope, radioisotope X rays, three mega electron volts. Then these two electrons with these energies. Next, uh, for the high LET, we have the following: electron of lower energy, one kilo electron volt, which has this uh, LET. Neutrons, uh, protons, carbon, ion, and heavy ions. Uh, relatively, it has a high LET compared to this one. We can visualize the difference between low LET and high LET. Let's start with low LET. Using this drawing, uh, let's say we have a certain target, for example, a tumor for radiation therapy. Low LET radiation is sparsely ionizing, shown here, and multiple exposures may be used to adequately irradiate the target tissue or the target uh, volume. So for example, uh, we use a cobalt-60 to irradiate the patient with gamma ray or using a LENAC, we irradiate the tumor uh, with an X-ray. Next, uh, for high LET, we have this illustration. High LET radiation causes dense ionization along the course of the beam as shown here. The biological uh, damage from high LET radiation, let's say alpha particle, protons, or neutrons, is much larger compared to uh, low LET radiation. This is because the living tissue uh, can easily repair damage from radiation that is spread, such as this one, over a large area, than that which is concentrated in a small area for high LET radiation. 
In summary, uh, we have discussed and differentiate ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. Ionizing radiation can be classified based on its ionization process. It can be directly or indirectly ionizing radiation. We can also classify IR, ionizing radiation, based on the quality or density of its ionization. We have the low and high LET radiation. Here in this uh, picture, we have a general illustration on how ionizing radiation interacts with matter, producing secondary ionization. Hi! If you have learned something in this video and you like my content, please consider subscribing my YouTube channel, JP Academia. See you in the next video.